Right, we came out, uh, didn't wait on the wind tomorrow. There's a lot of wind blowing down here. 22 knots and stuff. Very tight on the nose. I'm running one reef on some of the head sail reef because there's gusts there for about 26 at times. <laughs> it's such a wrestling match getting that thing reefed. I don't know why because see before I could reef this fucking hang in 30 knots of wind within less than 30 seconds. Cut the pieces and all sorts. Oh madness. But I'm out, I'm sailing so here we go. Okay, some tacking going on. I clean bollocks the rata. Tacking back and forth, up and down the side of the mull. Still well reefly. Oh, autopilot's terrible, it's going way off. Hey, see my autopilot? Of course the shit, it's not working half right. your head and nothing's going right by my reefing's terrible today I'm fucking Ugh. it's all going to keep calm all that speed I'm doing that you see the shape I'm going on huh? heading in for lock drum you yeah. uh, oh, and I like to do more video but my autopilot playing about during a heavy wind and it was tacking tacking and I had to sort of stay in the tiller because the wind was just slight variable a wee bit moving about. Not not overly variable, but it was just moving. So I had to steer more. Hard to mark and point. Right. Lock drum view. Again behind us. It's a good shelter in this anchorage. You can, there's going to be a load of boats in it. I just know it. And uh, there's no real hazards in this going in. Yeah. Just watch what you're doing. Drum view. No mobile signal in here at all. You've seen in here with me and Darren before, we explained about anchoring. Uh, what else have I explained? We're in an anchorage over at the other side as well. It's a popular anchorage, you know. There's not much here, you've no shops, you've no nothing like it's, it's out of the way. When me and Darren was hiding here during COVID, we hit out a storm up in that top corner. Really good holding in about 10 metres. Here's a big, it's a Dutch built boat over here. It's a big jam boat. It's something I said it would make an a really brilliant expedition boat. Uh, I actually met them last year right in the outer Hebrides in Vatersea. So guys, sailing is not glamorous. Today I tacked and tacked and tacked up that sign. 15 mile, a lot of work, a lot of work. Most people will put their motor on. In fact, that's what a lot of them do. But not me, I came with seal. My autopilot. Here, it's got my blood all over it. Fuck up, my hands are red, red raw. So, I'm just a bit pissed off, and I'm sorry I got a cotton. Actually, do more video because I got some nice, nice sailing there, like 20 and 26 knots gusts. Boat was sailing really good, and it, it just I couldn't do everything. I was reefing and steering the 
boat, that autopilot is going to actually get me killed. So I'm going to have to get it apart and see what I can do with but I can't seem to be able to fix it. <laughs> Fucking dingy, like. <laughs> try and get up to my leg today. My fingers crossed I can get a fucking berth in my leg. Uh, I'm gonna see it. I see there's electrical repairs up around there and I'm gonna see if I can get my autopilot fixed. That's absolutely bollocks and there's a wee bit like a wee resistor or something that was laying inside it so hopefully somebody will know something about it and maybe be able to fix this for me. See why like that autopilot? I'm on fucking big diffs, but if I run into heavy wind and stuff, reefing like that, and all it's going to be hard. Because usually I can keep the boat sailing when the boat's. When I can keep the boat sailing while I'm. while I'm reefing, I'm safer because the boat's, you know, still moving. This other way I'm going to be in great diffs. Uh, I'm going to have to hand steer everywhere. My dinghy's also fucking flat the whole front end of it. I'm going to try and get it fixed as well. I have a, a repair kit for it now. Oh, I'm I've got a, two big giant fucking midgy bites back. I don't know, I don't know if they're midgies or clegs or what they are, but they're huge bites. Oh, it's all going wrong. I may have to get a new autopilot. I hope not, but I hope not. If any of you guys watch the videos, I just want to help me. You'll see a pay PayPal account on the in the, in the channel or on, on the channel, it's in the description or something there. It's on the channel or go for me page, whatever one you want. Oh, pissed off and I'm absolutely knackered. It was yesterday coming up here, tacking up the whole sign. It's just a bollocks and then the autopilot going, I was trying to run it and then it was coming off and on and off course and it just, this has possibly been my worst season to date. I'm only fucking started. Using this idea, just trim the seals well and let that do the work like that. But when the wind dies it doesn't fucking help. I need a good constant wind. That's the only thing. I'm sailing in light <laughs> for every wind again trying to use it. Oh my god, my day couldn't be any worse. Um, we're currently out to Ardner Mark and fucking Lighthouse in the background. I'm sick of looking. <laughs> Over there we have the Isle of Rum. Come on, wind, please. <laughs> Somebody else to look out for me today. I need a wee bit of wind. Ten knots would be nice. I can get into my lag pronto. Apparently, there's somebody in here fixes autopilots, but I bet he doesn't fix this type. <laughs> the pit's hanging off it. Oh my god, and I was actually looking at prices of these online. The, the fucking actually went away up in price, and now seven hundred pound and six hundred pound. That's my fucking cruising money for the fucking three months. Ah, oh, fuck me. Right, guys, that's me and my leg. Beautiful my leg. Just wish the circumstances were a wee bit different. I am. Uh, Okay, coming to look at the autopilot. Uh, if he can't fix it, it's going to sting me. £575. Trying to use guys that's on this and watches my videos. If you want to help out, find that PayPal link for Just Because Seal in the YouTube channel there. It's up in the top somewhere there. And uh, or the GoFundMe page, I can send you links on here if you want, but it would be greatly appreciated because this is the most costly stop I've ever had. I should have leave it peeled off too. I'm actually, sick of video, <laughs> that's why it hasn't been much video. The rain's eased. So I need to get off the boat and go for a little walk. Let's see. 
seen this a lot. Why well, is there? Just come down around the marina, just sort of facing the mirror and straight across. Look, there's a wee, wee sign, circular walk, sort of beside that nice wee fancy house there. And we just follow this path. So just across from the Murrins, more or less. Just because there. And off we go. Board guys, just follow the path. Pretty nice in here, isn't it? And the sweet path just goes right up, and we'll come across the sign for the uh, for the lake or the lock. Just right up through the vault. Yeah, the lock we're going to see. Uh, it just cuts off the path, but there's the sign. There's a lock and have a stone in there. We'll follow the path up through the mountains. A nice walk. And so where the sign is, when you come to that way gate, just swing off to the left. If you look up, there's a post up here. You could miss it because there's another path just off to the uh, off to the right there. Decent set of boots, I suppose. Would be nice for this. I'm guessing a reasonable level of fitness. It's not too hard. A lot of nice young birch there. Perfect for making a, a bow for survival. As you see me and Darn make on last year's video, Castaway as it was called. Check it out, you'll get a laugh. Kind of amazing there what I'm doing because I'm starting to get to, you know, hiking places that people don't normally hike in. You know, you know if you're a hardened hiker you wouldn't be coming here just specifically to hike I don't think on these wee routes off. I'm sort of feeling pretty, pretty privileged to be sailing into places like this and, and hiking and things like that. That'll really do no justice. But we'll go right down there anyway. It's beautiful. Wild Scotland, eh? I love it. Plenty of deer around here as well, so they must see the big fences. Some say you hit the crossroads of life, eh? I've hit the crossroads of my bag. Where do I go? I did the circular walk. So, I know I'll go out back, that's going to take me back to my lag, okay? Via the other lock. So, do I go this way to lock or I go whatever you call that? Let <laughs> me go this way, see if we can get a look at it. And then we'll come back and we'll go back up over the hill. So, guys, I love doing this. Getting out there and adventuring and, you know, people often say to me, ah, oh, but you're fifth, you're fifth. Listen, there's nothing stopping you guys going out there and getting fifth. Uh, especially over the winter months, when you're sitting scratching your bum, you can get out there into the gym. If you don't have a gym, there's no big fucking deal. You can get those feet on the road and start running. You can start hitting mountains. You just gotta get out there, guys. Start adventure and start living. Uh, life's too short. So get out there, adventure more, explore more, start living. Guys, do you want to hear my weird sort of mind? <clears throat> see this wee island down here? That's somewhere I could see myself living in a little cabin. Cut off from the real world. Living off nature, huh? It'd be wild in the winter, wouldn't it? But I, I, I would love to do something like that. Still, uh, there's one thing I'd really love to do, right? And I spoke about this before. I'd love to spend the winter. Once he killed her. 
full blown winter on St Kilda. Uh, I should actually look into it and I would be quite happy. I'd, I'd love to, and I, I would even do it for even if they needed you, if they wanted you to do work out there for free for you to stay there, then I would quite happily do the work over winter for them. No problem, it'd just be class. Just need to be careful with boggy stuff like that, they get fucking bullish in it very quick. That's beautiful, but beautiful. Guys, I'm not gonna go on down to that lock or uh, something, whatever it's called. Do this wee mini summit. It's not it's not high at all. But should get a good look right in the area from there and then what I'll do is head back and up around the side of that mountain and we'll be able to look out over the sound of sleet. I don't know if you can see it over there, but there is the Isle of Muck. Or is it egg? Muck? Egg? Muck? Egg? Who knows? I'll tell you when I'm up there. That's the direction I'll be heading. I'm going to go back sailing. Sound of Sleet, Sleet Peninsula. Over there, the Isle of Rum. Muck or egg? Egg? Muck's down there. Somewhere. Change the plan. I'm not going to head back to my lag that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head across, sort of here. You can see that in between that, and then go down the side and across and follow. On the other side, of that is a place known as Loch Nevis. So go down by Loch Nevis and, and sort of contour around the bottom of this uh, mountain. There. I'll share my Strava link and then you can check my route on Strava. I'll just save it as walking in my lag or something like that and you can see where I've walked. <laughs> this is this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful countryside. Ooh. Woo! I'm free! There, see what I mean? You can find us quick. Dead sheep. Dead sheepy sheepy. Bunny Scotland. An adventure time for the old skipper. Woohoo! Beautiful. Absolutely fucking beautiful. Guys, get out of your adventure more, explore more, start living. Do you know what I mean? Don't keep fucking living the same day over and over and over and over again and calling it a life. You know, if I can do this shit, anyone can. If you're one of those guys that sit about the house and get depressed, get outside, get walking, get doing stuff like this. If you want adventures, come and see me, say to me. I'm always glad to have somebody along with me, but you just have to be willing to really want to do this stuff. Because I couldn't have a wind bag around me. Or I just, I like pushing it. I like, I like living, I like living on the edge a little bit. And that's why now when I'm doing more of the solo sailing and solo hiking and challenges and it's all by myself like it's uh, to me it, it's a bit more dangerous and I like it <laughs> that's but in a way I know what I'm doing to a certain extent so keep that in mind if you're going to start doing it start easy easy steps okay you're going out hiking I guess as well pack accordingly you know Waterproofs in there, food, water, map, compass. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't have a map with me. But I have a ordnance survey map on my phone with my active GPS. So, and I have my charger here for the phone as well. So, it's only a tiny hike. I'm not doing anything serious. And I've already scouted the area on my phone. So, I know 
when I hit down this river where that river will lead me to or where that river will lead me back to. So the mental picture there as well. So just don't think I just vanish and, and nothing's thought out, okay? And you should do the same if you set off out here. Alright guys, you want to give us a wee tip? If you're up there in the likes of the high point or where I was, looking round, right? Getting sort of ground appraisal sort of thing, right? What you have to remember when you're looking out over ground like this, from up there, it can look pretty, you know, easy walking. So just be aware of what you're going down into maybe a lot harder than what you first think. So keep that in mind that the ground just may not be as easy as, as it looks from a higher point. So when you take a good look across the ground, keep that in mind. You also want to watch out for boggy stuff. Then around here there is boggy patches like and some of these spots you could go into up to your neck like. In fact you could vanish in some of them so be careful. Fishing that. Absolutely unbelievable. And that's what he's there for, the big heron. He's fishing everywhere. So much up there. Is that lake down there that you seen Loch? I'd say that's full of trout too. Survival situation in this place would be absolutely ideal. Massive big caves, well protected from the weather, in the rocks. We've got running water, fresh water to drink. Uh, we've dead wood about so you can light a fire. And we now know that there's, there's small fish, which is probably trout, in that river. Because it's so narrow and so small, it would be so easy to, to actually catch the fish. Got a few methods I'm not sure with you in case people are actually out doing them. Yeah. Uh, places like this. You can I can picture myself here in a survival situation. I know that's nuts, but there's so much here that you could survive reasonably well. Uh, well obviously we're close to a town but I'm talking like if we were in the wild somewhere somewhere we didn't know. No there's, there is a lot of actual survival schools run in around Scotland. And I guess no better place because we're in the highlands, so to speak, so you're not going to get much harsher than that. Fucking ideal there. Only ways up. Now I'll spray the singing. <sighs> Change of mind. Summit. I'll tell you a name when I'm up here. I'll show you up when I'm up. Woo! This isn't the proper, this is off the beaten track, like so. This saw it because the other way I'd be back too quick. Woo! That's tight climbing there. Don't slip here and you're fucking toast. <laughs> uh, I don't advise this way to anybody. Come at your own risk if you follow my uh, Strava, okay? Get up it! That's the house boy in there. The Isle of Malag, or not the Isle of Malag, sorry, Malag. <laughs> Baby. So guys, in here, that's Loch Nevis. I may go down here to anchor, not sure. 
Loch Navis. This is the Lox. I can't pronounce the name of the Lox. Right here we've got all the small isles. Uh, rum and canna and egg and stuff. We've got the Sleep Peninsula. The Isle of Skye over there. And way over here is the Colons of Skye. Right up the sign the Sleep. And the Skye Bridge is up right here. So glad I can take you up here. To the half point in my lap. No pass about here, like I'm off the beaten track, so if you're gonna do it, you may be a route up to us, but I haven't checked for a route up, but I just went the way I went in taking in the sights I wanted to see while I was walking. It's more of an adventure that way. Coming back to a bit of civilization now. Nice wee house down here. We'll get on the path and then just follow the path back to the lag. Bit of a road, so. Happy days guys, that's me, uh, out of the mountains more or less, just did bar this and around the back of that, but it's all past. It's been a great wee adventure, uh, just took my mind off waiting on that autopilot, so that's the main thing. Get out there guys, start adventuring, start living. That's me coming out on the path, some place for a house down there, look at that. Unreal. Bunny Scotland. Beautiful. And back to my leg we go. Not much up here to show you. If you get a nice viewpoint or something, I'll show you. Sort of the last look I'm going to give you about here. Just round the corner, right here is Malag, and this is Loch Navis. Uh, from what I've seen up there on the top of the, the mountain there, it's pretty nice down there. So I have never been down there before, so it's a possibility to go and anchor there at some point. Let's get a shift deal and head back to the boat. Get some dinner. I'm starving. I hope you enjoyed that wee track one. I wish it was sailing on the island. A wee village, so to speak. We, oh, I don't know what it is, a wee community. So just follow this road now and take our stick back into the bag. Right beside the harbour.